Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. It's a very good time for such a discussion. Several days ago, the Parliament adopted the Common agricultural, agricultural Policy for the period from 2023 to 2027. We didn't manage, we didn't have the time to uh, make an agreement for 2021 and 2022, so we just extended uh, the previous cap policy. So the next policy will be two years shorter. Actually, I did not support this policy, and I have mentioned this in media. Uh, anyway, it has been adopted, and this is a document drafted in 2018. It was discussed, and there was no discussion about any Green Deal whatsoever back then. This document does not actually speak about the Green Deal that much. It only contains several details, whereas the Green Deal is a separate package of documents, which will be implemented from, from the recovery fund. In Lithuania, the recovery fund will not be used for the agriculture, so the Green Deal uh, will be implemented in the extent it is stipulated in common agricultural policy. Uh, let me bring your attention to the news and differences in these documents in this document as compared to the previous one. Generally speaking, common agricultural policy is not a revolution or rather evolution, and much will depend on the attitude of the member states, on their ability to agree, to coordinate the implementation with the farmers' organizations, coordination among politicians, implementers, and all other stakeholders. All these efforts should be uh, directed into the um, reaching the common goal and achieving the best possible outcome for everyone. So one of the new things stipulated in CAP is a strategic plan, which was not compulsory to member states before. Now each member state has to finalize strategic plans and to deliver it with an explanation of their vision of uh, implementation. Of implementation of their obligations under CAP. Another thing I want to say is that the European Parliament held a different position, but during the negotiations with the member states, uh, it was noted that they required a lot of flexibility, which I was not happy about. It's possible that the common agricultural policy in the end will not be that common, because many there are many options for the member states to act at their own discretion. Therefore, it is very important, as I said, how the member states will coordinate the implementation of the goals. Speaking of the strategic plans, the, the most essential thing is going to be changed. The previous green initiative was compulsory to the state and the farmers. It was regulated. It was uh, rather common for the entire Europe, and it was not effective. So the greening problem was replaced by environmental schemes. In the beginning, we spoke about 30%, then we ended up with 25% of the entire support which should be uh, allocated to the environmental schemes. And one of the reasons why I didn't support CAP was that we wanted to ensure 
similar environmental schemes that would be used by all member states. Unfortunately, the Commission failed to come to such an agreement, and therefore the member states may uh, draft uh, environmental schemes at their own description and then deliver them to the Commission to approve. So uh, an important thing is that these schemes are not compulsory to farmers but are compulsory for the member states. If the farmers do not participate in those schemes, they will not receive 25% of the direct payments. So it's a very question, question how the member states will cope with it. Will they be able to um, engage the farmers to participate in these environmental schemes? Because if the funds are not used, they will be transferred to the second pillar, rural development, and used for climate programs, not for environmental farming and not for whatever people come up with. There are some other new aspects regarding uh, uh, retaining of wetlands, crop rotation, and other aspects. And farmers with the farms up to 10 hectares will not have to participate in these schemes. And we have about 90% of such size farmers in Europe, whereas in the Baltic states and eastern countries, the farms are larger. So these aspects will not touch upon too many farmers. Another piece of news is related to the fact that the uh, payment uh, ceiling has not been established, and it's up to the member states again. However, there is an obligation to transfer 10% of payments to small farms, young farmers, and this is something compulsory. This way, uh, payments regulation is rather straightforward and much depends on the decision made by member states. More attention is, spent, is paid to environmental farming, organic farming, uh, the policy sets different uh, directions, different indicators. Uh, some things uh, look like a dream, but well, sometimes it's nice to have dreams. Organic farming will cover not only the second pillar, but will also be supported from the first uh, pillar, environmental schemes. So organic farming will get more possibilities if they are used, of course. I was all, also sorry to see that the leader program was reduced by 1%. And to finish off, I would like to mention some positive developments. Although CAP financing has been reduced for 2021-2027. However, financing allocated to Lithuania has uh, been increased, and this is something positive. Direct payments increased by 30%, and it is extremely important to make sure that this funding is received by the farmers. Uh, like several other countries, Lithuania has seen the increase of arable land, and due to this, uh, payments per hectare will not be increased as much. It will increase from 3 uh, billion euros to over 4 billion. Uh, euros. Rural development financing will stay on more or less the same level. Some funds were added from the recovery fund. So we're talking about uh, 6 billion going down to 5 billion. So generally speaking, Lithuania uh, 
uh, had 4.7 billion in the previous uh, period, and now we'll have 4.6 uh, billion. As you see, about 900 million difference, and it's very important that the farmers actually feel that, so that their competitiveness increases, so that their work efficiency increases, so that uh, new farms are developed, young farmers develop their farms. And uh, another thing that I wanted to mention is that promises given to Lithuania when it accessed EU that in 2013 the funding will be equal to other uh, the, to funding of other countries. Unfortunately, this uh, word was not kept. We only managed to negotiate that it will reach about 85% of the average of the EU. So we are not fully competitive. On the other hand, the Eastern countries, the Baltic countries and Lithuania needs need a lot of investment uh, when developing and establishing their farms. In this aspect, aspect the old Europe has been uh, has, has a long-term tradition, a long-term development, and we have to uh, catch up. It will be more difficult for us to fulfill all the requirements. Uh, the European Parliament uh, always uh, thought that new requirements should be accompanied by new funding. And uh, as I said, different strategies have been discussed, biological diversity from uh, field to table, all sorts of other initiatives should be compensated to the farmers. Otherwise, uh, they will not be able to implement uh, those initiatives, or there must be an agreement with the processors, with the sellers, and the food chain should be developed. One of the most important priorities for this period is about fair pricing and fair payments. This issue has been on the agenda for a long time. In countries with uh, less direct payments, usually we see lower uh, prices of buying agricultural products from farmers. The cooperation is very poorly developed in the Baltic states and uh, in the European Europe, in, Euro in Eastern Europe. And in this field, we have to improve a lot to help people cooperate in all industries, not only selling raw materials, but also in processing. It is also very important that Lithuania implements the short chain principle as soon as possible. For that, we need to change public procuring, procurement laws so that in every village, in every city, and in every town, people would be able to use their own products rather than bring them from other countries, which leads to a poor quality and also to suffering of local farmers. So those short chains will allow for us to have more possibilities to organize local production uh, and having local raw materials and local processing. Finally, I always encourage people to contribute to the implementation of anti-food uh, waste program. An average European, European throws away about 100 kilograms of good food. So this is something we really need to work on with the supermarkets to avoid throwing away good products with schools, university, health uh, organizations, public um, catering. Here we could really save 20% of raw materials, and it means that we would have to grow less if we don't waste food. So these programs could be implemented started starting today. Uh, I'm out of time now. Best greetings from Strasbourg. If you have any questions, I will be very happy to answer them. Thank you.